In this task, we want to apply base rule on the classification of patients and giving them a diagnosis uh, according to their symptoms. So we have given this table over here, which gives us for our eight patients, each a diagnosis. Um, so for, for each patient, we get one of those. And also we get for all the symptoms, whether they occur on that patient. And the first step we have to do here is to compute the pi of probabilities, P of CI. Let's do it for the first one. So for the first disease that we observe. And yeah, this is just the number of times that this occurs divided by the cardinality um, of our omega here. And this is just yeah, the number of times that we see C1 here, which is just once divided by eight for our eight patients. But for C2, for example, we would get two over here because we have C2 twice, once here and once there. Again, divided by eight, which is one divided by four and so on. And in order to now compute the posterior probabilities, we actually have to do a trick or something in two steps. So first we want to compute our um, yeah, probabilities of our symptoms given the condition that a certain um, yeah, diagnosis or disease has to be applied. So let's first do that for C1. And here we just apply the definition of conditional probability. So here we are asking for the number of times that we see both S4 and C1 occurring together in this table. And we can see that out of the one time where C1 occurs, S4 never occurs. So we get zero divided by one eighth. So yeah, just zero here. And um, yeah, and so on. And the next step then is to apply yeah, two rules from probability in order to um, yeah, compute our a posteriori or posterior probabilities. And these are C1 under the condition S4. So imagine you observe the symptom S4. What is the probability that the patient really indeed has the disease C1? And here we apply two things. So, well, of course, first the definition, maybe I'll write that out in full. So this is the probability of C1 and S4 divided by probability of S4. But um, yeah, here we don't really need to take this over here. We can just fill in um, the step that we did before over here. And um, yeah, we just take this formula over here and multiply both sides with that one over here. So this yields, let's maybe write it that way. This yields probability of C1 times probability S4 under the condition of C1 equals probability of S4 and C1. So let's quickly fill that in over here. So what we get here is probability of C1 times probability of S4 under the condition of C1. And 
Now the problem is that we never really computed this S probability of S4. But what we can do here is apply total probability, which means that we can sum sum up our um, yeah our terms p c j times probability s four under the condition of c j. So this is the formula of total probability for j equals one to five because we have all five different diagnoses here. And the key now is that we, for all those terms, um, have values uh, given in, in the computations above. So we can just fill this in. So let me quickly do this. This over here, probability of C1 is 1 8th times 0 because this term over here is zero. Well, what happens here, no matter what we write here, uh, we will get zero in the end. So the probability that a patient indeed has disease C1, if we observe the symptom S4 is zero. But let's, let's finish this computation over here. So um, we have this term for J equals one, and what we get is one eighth times zero. Then we have it for j equals two, one fourth times one half, plus, and so on. So this way you can see how the computation works. And in the end, we get for our symptom S4 and for all our diseases, Cj, we get our apostoria. Uh, a posteriori probabilities, and this is how we can perform a classification.